Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be talking about what I learned from my day of silence. So I went to Bali for Nyepi and Nyepi is the day of silence where the whole island shuts down. The roads are closed, everything is closed, shops, pharmacies, like groceries, everything is closed, including the roads. You turn off all your lights, you let go of all your worldly desires and um, it's a day where everyone goes within, meditates and the the whole island shuts down and it's absolutely beautiful and I would say it was top 10 one of my most life-changing experiences I've ever had and I didn't go to Bali with the intention to experience the silence day Nyepi I went and it just so happened to be during that day which is such a shame because in the past I have been here during the day of silence and I honestly didn't respect it because I was unaware and luckily this time I was aware <laughs> hello i've woken up sorry guys i'm so sorry bali for the past this is actually my last day here in bali i went to bali two weeks ago i was there for a few days went to taiwan for nine days and then i just came back here yesterday or the day before and i wrote some notes and some of the notes don't really like elaborate like the first one says shadow work <laughs> And I think anyone who is like somewhat spiritual knows the importance of shadow work. We all have a shadow side. For there to be good, there must be bad. For there to be rich, there must be poor. That is the balance of life, you know? For there to be anything, there must be some comparison to something else, you know what I mean? For something to be full, there must be things that are empty. For there to be emptiness, there must be things that are full. But with um, shadow work, I don't actually know the full definition, but how I interpret shadow work is working and figuring out the parts of you that aren't exactly the greatest and not seeing yourself as a villain and villainizing yourself and thinking that you're a bad person but working out why those things make you who you are so actually maybe i'll just like google what shadow work is what does it mean to do shadow work working with your unconscious mind to uncover the parts of yourself that you repress and hide from yourself okay i feel like that's a better explanation but i'm not on the wrong path you know this can include trauma or parts of your personality that you subconsciously consider undesirable. Anyone can do shadow work on their own. So I do a lot of shadow work because there are a lot of things about me that isn't good. There's a part of me that is very interested in snuff films, not the porn pornographic type. For some reason before I sleep, sometimes I have this urge to watch real life videos of people and I don't know what it is. And I hide that from everyone. This is the first time I'm really talking about it publicly because I have to talk about the things about ourselves that aren't desirable. Do you think I want to tell people that like, I'm so intrigued by these videos that like I will scroll on my phone and it's on the clear web. I'm not going on the dark web. So I believe a lot of these videos that I'm watching are not real. Like why does that intrigue me so much? And then doing shadow work on myself and, and realize that like I have also experienced so much trauma that when I'm watching these videos, I'm mentally preparing myself. If any of these situations happen, God forbid, that I will be ready to handle those situations because I have desensitized myself to it. Um, and then also like I'm a very sensitive person so like watching these things desensitizes me to hurt and pain that I am so easily triggered by. I figured that like Nyepi is a time to do shadow work, to, to work on your traumas, to work on the things about yourself that you're not necessarily proud of and to not hate yourself for those things and to, to realize that for there to be good in you there must be a part of you that has a bit of bad in you a bit of evil all right i'm not saying i'm evil i'm not saying we're all inherently evil but none of us are perfect you know so i was listening to a lot of ralph smart which is my favorite youtuber called infinite waters i've been watching him since my attempt when i was young when i was 17 years old you guys probably know me from that video when i got kicked out of school i had so much time on my hands i needed to work on myself a lot i had lost my friends i lost my friendships i lost my relationship with my parents relationship with myself and i really needed to work on myself i was listening to a lot of him during that day because i wanted to make sure that everything that i was listening to was good for the soul i will put a link up in the cards here of the silent day meditation i did from this wonderful wonderful woman and i subscribed to her instantly and i cried oh i get emotional thinking about it because i remember the meditation i did with her like you burn something and then you like hold your hand over it it's a very ritualistic kind of thing you feel the heat of the the thing that you're burning and you let it go and I I just felt like I truly let 
a lot of my pain go? Why am I getting emotional? What I'm trying to say is that I will, every single month, I am going to do a day of silence. And I asked you guys on my Instagram, I changed my Instagram name. It's baby blues, baby dot blues, but it's B-A-B-V instead of Y dot blues. Um, and I posted a poll there and I said and asked you guys, should I do a silent day on the new moon or the full moon? And everybody said to do it on the new moon or most people said to do it on the new moon. I just read that the next new moon is April 20. 420 boys honestly probably not gonna smoke but like because i'm sober guys i have so much to talk about my trip in taiwan i had struggled with drugs so much and i said no to drugs in taiwan except i have a little bit of weed but it didn't do anything for me so because it was like a vape vapes don't do anything for me um but people offered me heavy drugs that i used to have troubles with and i said no to every single person proud of myself thank god for nippy the day of silence <laughs> so i was listening to ralph smart that's where we were going at okay and he said this one thing and it was i am not going to take this day for granted and i have been using that mantra i, I don't know if that's the right word but i've been using that saying for the last two weeks since that happens with nippy since i heard that and i feel like every single day has been a blessing i have had not one bad day since Nyepi. It's been two weeks of every day has been good. Obviously I'm on holiday, so why would I not have a good day? Since I've been waking up with this thought that I'm not gonna take this day for granted, sometimes it's not like the first thing I think of, sometimes it's in the afternoon where I repeat this to myself and I say, oh, I'm not gonna take this day for granted. I don't know, it's just such a positive way to like see the day that like, I have the next 24 hours for myself. Wait, I realized I ordered food. I want to see if it's here. Motherfucker, I canceled my order. Wait, I'll show you guys how I make sure that like my camera can see me. I get this camera and then I, I don't even know how to describe it. And I can talk about being here now. Like I've been listening to a lot of Baba Ramdas. I would really like to one day get his lectures and everything I learned from him and kind of compile it into a video but it will honestly be like an hour long oh i'll quickly tell you about this one that has been kind of resonating with me what i've been doing a lot is that when i'm at work i'm focusing on the work i gotta do at home i'm focusing on my housework while i'm at work i'm like oh my god like i have to do this at home i have to do this at home and then when i'm at home i'm like oh my god i gotta bring this to work i gotta make sure to do this at work i have to remember to tell this to my boss like when i'm at home i'm thinking about work when I'm at work, I'm thinking about stuff at home. And Baba Ramdas talked about like the importance of being here now and why we shouldn't let our thoughts wander and just to enjoy the present moment and that the richness of this moment is as rich as he says as the drive home. <laughs> okay, that's in a whole nother one. Okay, but what he says is that if he is trying to be a present and good person and let's say he's walking to the bathroom, he really needs to go pee. And someone says, hey, Baba Ramdas, do you have a second? He's like, okay, of course. If he wants to be efficient with his time, if he wants to do things the right way, um, I don't know exactly the term he uses, while he's talking to the person who's asking him a question, is he gonna be thinking, oh, I have to go to the bathroom, I have to go to the bathroom, I have to go to the bathroom. The quickest way to answer this guy's question in order to run to the bathroom is to forget about the bathroom be in the present moment, give someone your full attention and time, answer their question without thinking, I gotta go to the bathroom, I gotta go to the bathroom. Because how can you answer their question efficiently if you're thinking about going to the bathroom? So you talk to them, you deal with that first, then you can go to the bathroom and enjoy being at the bathroom. And I, I know that's um, a very like simple and um, short way to explain the importance of being here now. But when I'm at work, if I want to do my work right, I should not be focusing on what I'm doing at home. If I want to do, let's just sit comfortably like this, <laughs> like we're meditating or something. I kind of want to stretch. But like, if I want to be good at my job and be good at work, I need to be focusing on my work and not be thinking about the stuff I got to do at home. You know what I mean? I love how I'm just like casually stretching now. It's fine. It's fine, we do whatever I want on this channel. It's my fucking channel. It is our channel though. So if I wanna be present and enjoy my time at home, why am I thinking about what I need to do at work? That was the longest tangent ever. Another thing I do is that I never just fucking sit down and eat my food and enjoy it. I'm like eating my food while I'm like doing the laundry, doing the dishes. 
And I'm never fucking enjoying my food. And when I'm sitting down eating, I'm focusing on sitting down and eating and not focusing on work. Here, I also learned from Ralph Smart. Bank collapse is a symptom of the system collapsing. So this program, this, this program, that's what he calls it, is collapsing. I think the system's collapsing slower than he thinks, but who knows, he's a smart one, you know? He's Ralph Smart. But there has been banks that have been collapsing. Basically, if the banking system's collapsing, do you think the people trust the government? Do you think the people trust to put their money in the bank? Do you think people, imagine working your whole life, putting your money in the bank and it's gone. That's gonna cause people to riot. That's gonna cause people to scream and yell and be like, what the fuck? That I've been slaving for this system and then I have nothing to show for it. Of course, people are gonna go crazy. And that just shows that like, when people realize that and the banks fail us, they're gonna realize, wow, this system is failing us. And that's, that is a symptom of the system collapsing. I changed my Invisalign and this one like stores like, <laughs> fuck, fucking just move on. And he says, invest in raw materials. So I have been kind of buying sterling silver, like not like pieces or blocks or whatever they're called, nuggets of sterling silver, but I am now buying jewelry that is sterling silver. And obviously when I'm richer, I would love to like invest in gold as well because money is just money. You can, they can print out paper. They can just print out more paper. The value of money is the value that the system gives money. When you have millions of dollars in cash, if the banks don't recognize the cash, if the system don't recognize the cash, you just have paper. But if you have raw materials, that can be used as a form of like money. You know what I mean? Like that can be used to trade. At the end of the day, when the world crumbles, sorry to say, do we not all have climate anxiety? Are we not, are we not worried people my age that this world is limited? Things might not last like this, that this might be as good as it gets. Whew, I'm already starting to stress myself out. I'm not trying to stress you guys out. Do not depend on a system that is collapsing. He says the society expiration date is expiring we are gonna go back to our mud huts and i'm fucking excited for it that's my positive way of thinking about this <laughs> okay and i have learned so much on how to live sustainably by myself watching primitive technology and saving up so that i could buy land so that i can live my fucking mud hut guys <laughs> I'm gonna be prepared for the system to collapse. Who wants to join me? Who wants to join me in my village? Comment down below. Sunflower Village, will you join the Sunflower Village? And he says this as well. Because what he's trying to say is that money doesn't really have value and that we should put our money into raw materials because one day the society might just decide this cash means nothing. Or they can just print more cash and then our cash means nothing. If they print more cash, then that means our val our cash is not as valuable. And he says, how much would it take for me to buy your eyes? I'm asking you, if I could buy both your eyes, what is the price for me to buy it? Because for me personally, you cannot buy my eyes. You cannot buy my eyes. These are my eyes. It doesn't matter how much you offer me, you cannot buy my eyes. And I'd say most people think the same. Like, you cannot buy my eyes that already makes you priceless. That already makes you a wealthy man, woman, in between, whatever. That already makes you a wealthy human. Because your eyes are priceless and they're in your fucking skull, man. It's a figure of speech. I'm not trying to say that like, oh, just because you don't have eyes or that your eyes don't work, that they're not worthy. It's, that, it's, it's what I'm saying is if someone could buy your ears or your hearing, what would that price be? If someone could buy your sight, what would that price be? Priceless, right? You would not sell your hearing, you would not sell your sight. Does that not make you a wealthy person? Because you cannot buy it, it's priceless. So you are already the richest man on earth. That's what he says. Okay, so this one is from Liz. So you guys have listened to the wizard Liz. She is incredible. I really resonate with her and I like that she's a person talking about self-help 
who's gone through a lot like she's gone through like a lot of stuff that i'm not even going to talk about because it's her own stuff you can go watch it on her channel it's called the wizard liz she's just an inspirational person and i relate to her so much she says put yourself in a neutral position by saying it is what it is not it's not negative it's not positive like if something bad happens to you to literally be like it is what it is and it already like feels better to say it like let's say you got kicked out of your university because you pissed in a bush when you were drunk fuck that sucks but you know what it is what it is you know to not be like oh my god it's fine at least i'm going to have more space in my day to to do other things apart from studying or at least i'll have more time to hang out with my friends or the opposite way and being like oh my god my life's gonna fail blah 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 to have like a neutral position that's what it says here but to have to be neutral in your thinking goes a long way because then it brings you to what now it brings you to solution if you go down oh it's positive it's positive it, it'll work out in the end yeah that's great if you go negative you know you can get over all that negative stuff by feeling it straight away and then you can let go of it later yeah that's great but the quickest way to move forward and to come to these solutions is to literally be like it is what it is because now what now what that's already starting you to come up with a solution to your problem she also said this a job is never embarrassing let's say you lose your job you're like it is what it is now what might as well start applying for some jobs because that's what it is i don't have one so time to apply it doesn't matter what job you have she says there is no job that is embarrassing you can be a janitor you can work on the spicy site you can be a stripper you can be whatever a construction worker whatever no job is embarrassing she says our negative mindset isn't always just in the mind it can also be in the room with us get moving and she says this so perfectly she was saying that you know sometimes when you enter a room you don't even know what people were talking about and you can feel the energy let's say everyone was talking about something serious something triggering and you enter the room you feel that energy and sometimes people can leave that room and you can feel that energy. And same as like being in the same room that you were depressed in, you're, you're dying in that room, like literally like suffering. Your walls carry that energy, the space carries that energy, and then you need to get yourself out of it. You need to walk out, you need to get moving. That's what she said, get moving. Get the fuck out of that place. Do not stay in a place that is just killing you, you know what I mean? You might even be in your room thinking that like, oh, everything is all good, but why do I feel so heavy? Get out, go take a walk. Literally just even walk around your lobby. Just get out of it and then it can kind of even reset your room, reset the space you're in because you also carry that energy as well. If your room is reflecting negative energy and it's you're absorbing it and then your yourself is like letting your room absorb like the space, your negative energy, it's just gonna go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If you can step out, get some fresh air, hear the birds whistling, you don't even know the energy that shifts inside of you and then you take that into your room and it already can change the energy in your room okay she talks about something different but this is just me adding on to it okay cooking is meditating that's what she says as well meditation is not just sitting there like this i do all types of meditation i meditate when i'm washing the dishes i feel the water on my hands how the soap feels how the food that's left on the plate feels I don't think about what I'm doing tomorrow. I don't think about what happened yesterday. I'm not anxious about the future. I'm not depressed about the past. I am simply, sometimes I'm not even like, oh, that water feels nice. I am just feeling the water. There's no opinion. There's no, oh my God, am I almost done? And even Ramdas talked about this where it's like, being in the present moment is easy when you're, when you're getting there. You know what I mean? It's not, it's when you have to tell yourself, oh, I have to do it. You know what I mean? It's being like, oh my God, I better do the dishes and then I can do my work. Once you start doing the dishes, it's not so bad and you can enjoy doing the dishes. Sometimes while doing the dishes, you don't even want to get back to work. You know what I mean? Like once you start doing the dishes, you get so into what you're doing in the moment that you're not even focusing on what you have to do later. I like this one saying, be so present, all you can see is your nose. Because you see your nose all the time, if you're so present, that's really all you can see. 
you know i have done a lot of soul searching i have done a lot of healing i would say in the last three months especially this whole year 2023 i have never been more in touch with my spiritual side spirit source whatever you guys call it your inner self whatever it is God, I have been so in touch and I have been receiving all these messages from the universe telling me keep going We hear you. We hear you. Keep going. Keep going. We hear you I would ask the universe for signs and the universe would give it to me and I've heard a lot of people say ask for a sign and You will get it and you won't exactly get it the way you want to it won't exactly be a direct sign in your face like I literally had this one thing that I asked the universe and I said if the next card I pull out is the fool card then that means he's hurting me behind my back and I pulled out this happened a year ago and I pulled out the fool card and I was like fuck he's hurting me behind my back and then I talked to him directly and I found out that he wasn't he was just doing something innocent like what boys do when she's worried about him cheating and he's just fucking stuffing a pillow under his shirt and playing like sumo wrestling with the boys something like that right and it made me realize what the universe was telling me was that i'm the fool <laughs> was that i'm the fool and i don't know anything about tarot i listen to tarot pretty much every day but i don't know much about it i don't know how to read tarot i don't know how to do a tarot reading and i don't know what the cards mean but I know that tarot is how you interpret it. And if the universe is sending you signs, they will send it to you. It's just like a interpretive reading kind of thing. You know what I mean? So it's how you interpret it. So I interpreted it the wrong way. I was saying, pull out the fool card if my man's doing something shady. And the universe gave me the fool card when I realized he wasn't doing something shady. It was me being insecure and stuck in my head. And in reality, the universe was telling me, you're the fool. That I'm the one who's getting so silly over something so small, over a person who's trustworthy, over a person who's never done me wrong, or at least at that time never did me wrong. Thanks for slapping the fool right in my face, you know, because I was the fool. And that's what I'm saying, like, don't get angry. Being like, I asked for a sign, I asked for a dice, and I didn't get my dice. Maybe the universe made you bump into a person who's got a dice tattoo. And that person said something to you that was coming from the universe was you know what i mean okay that's i sound crazy right now so i'm gonna leave um sorry for being all trippy dippy hippy on you guys but um i just really want to help and tell you guys what i learned from shutting the fuck up and actually the the main thing that i learned the main thing that I learned, wow, we waited 20 minutes to get into this, this part. At first, I, I kept thinking, what should I say to the world when I come back? Because I'm so t chatty, I'm so talkative. I was thinking, what should I say to the world when I come back to the world? And at first I thought, I gotta come back to the world with something inspiring, with something life-changing. The next thing I say has to be incredible. And then after the full day, of being quiet, I realize that it doesn't matter what you come back to the world with. That silence teaches us more than words. That silence teaches us more than language. That silence is a language that everyone can learn to speak and still understand. I realize that like it didn't matter what are the first things I say. Actually, the first things I said is I'm not going to take this day for granted because I was listening to Ralph Smart and I was just like repeating what he said and I just said it out loud. I wasn't trying, like obviously, like you're not supposed to talk but you're not gonna get in trouble for talking, you know? And I said that and I was like, oh, that's what's beautiful as well. Like the first thing I did say was something positive and good and it did make a difference to me because the words you say has a certain weight. If you say a lot of words and you don't mean it and you don't follow those through with actions, your words have very little weight. But if you say a few words and you mean it, and let's say you thought about those words for 24 hours, then the words you say has more meaning, has more weight, more feeling. I don't know if the term is right, but more energy to it. I realized that like I had spewed so much shit, just word vomiting all my life. And that sometimes your words have more meaning when you say less when you only say a few words. But anyways, I'm gonna go. Comment if you wanna be part of the Sunflower Village. I hope it will be in Indonesia manifesting it. Love you guys all, bye.